Well, good morning, everyone. Here we go. We're almost done with the book of Revelation. I'm so pleased you stuck in there this whole time with, with us here on Inspiration for today. Well, I really feel, and of course we're in chapter 22, the very last chapter of the book. And the first half of it kind of was a continuation of John's narrative of what heaven well, actually, what all the events will be like and what will happen. And then in 21 and 22, he has described where you and I are going to live. And if you weren't with us for those shows, you need to go back and view them because this is going to be, if you are a follower of Christ, this is going to be where you live forever. And you'll want to know those descriptions. But starting in verse 7, on, in chapter 22, it's as if John knows that the book is about over. Uh, what he has been told, he has written down, and what he has seen. Uh, but he has several paragraphs just that are kind of like review. They've all the things in these, or pretty much all these things, have already, he has said directly or have been made clear along the way in the book of Revelation. So now, I just want to remind you, remember when we first started? This book is writ was written to existing churches at the end of the first century. And it was meant as an encouragement to them because times were very, very tough. There was a huge amount of persecution. And that, of course, is why John was exiled on the island of Patmos, kind of like a prison. And it was there that he had these visions and had the time to write this book down and actually make copies of it to send to the seven churches, which we all studied those. So I'm going to just go through and review these. I think they're important because clearly when John repeats them, He's saying, it's as if he's saying to his friends in those churches. Now, I know there's been a lot of detail in between chapter 1, well, actually, the beginning of the, his letter, and the end. So I want to make sure that you remember these things. Well, we've read a lot of that, too, and maybe these are things we really need to remember. I think they are. I know they are. Verse 7, Jesus is, is talking again. And he says, Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. We haven't heard that since Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. And there, the exact wording was, Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy in this book. So he's repeating himself. He wants us to know, yeah, Life is tough. Life has hardships, it, it, heartaches. But blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Prophecy, it just means truth-telling. Literally in Greek, it means truth-telling, not necessarily predictive. Sometimes is predictive, but it's just meant as uh, truth. The teller of truth is prophecy. And the things that you and I have read, no matter how, hard and imaginative, they were true. They are true. Most of them haven't happened yet, but they are certainly going to happen. Verse 8, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard and had seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel. Remember when he did that? <laughs> that was in chapter 19, actually. And he said, but the angel said to me, don't do it. I'm a fellow servant of you and your brothers. And the end of that paragraph just says, the angel said, worship God. Only God. Only God. And that's a great reminder for us. This book should make us worship God, our Lord. And then he told me, verse 10, do not seal up the words of this prophecy of the book because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. But let him who does righteous continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. He's encouraging 
his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Hang in there. If people will do bad things. Let them do it. But that's not an excuse for you, is what he's saying. No. He says, continue to do right. That's all that God, and that's what God asks of us. To live close to him and, and, and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Isn't that interesting? At the end of this book, Revelation, John takes the time to remind us to hang in there and keep going, continue to do righteous acts. And then he quotes Jesus again. Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Wow. Let's finish what Jesus has to say. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life. How do you wash your robe? You accept Christ as your Savior and your sins are washed away. Very, very interesting, again, that he reminds us of these things. He's still making a plea. If people who are not yet believers read this, he's still reaching out to them. But he does say, Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, sexual immorality, the murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Jesus wanted us to know these things. I'm so glad you spent these, well, it's turned out to be two months studying through this together. It says right there, Jesus wanted us to, I, Jesus, sent my angel to give this to you. Now, he gave it to us through his uh, apostle John, but he wanted you to know it and me to know it. And now we have had that blessing. We've had that blessing. It's fantastic, and I am so thankful for it. He reminds us how great he is. I am, really, these are complete, the completion of various prophecies in the Old Testament where he reminds us that he is the root and offspring of David. And the bright morning star is just one of the words, one of the names that Jesus has taken upon himself. Verse 17, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, let him who hears come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. And there it is. The, the offer, the final offer that, that Jesus makes to anyone who, who is listening and hears. And if anyone, and when he says, are you th thirsty? Do you have a desire to grow in your spiritual life? Do you have a desire to get to know Jesus, the, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe? Do you have that desire? Do you have an emptiness in your heart that can only be filled by worshiping the Lord? If that's you, if that's a description of you, don't hesitate any longer. This is the day of opportunity. This is the day, and he says, What's that key word in, 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 in verse 17? Whoever is thirsty. The opportunity of the free gift of salvation just by asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And help, he'll help you change in any way you need. Don't worry about the change now. Just open your heart to Jesus. He says, whoever is thirsty, let him come. I hope that's you today, and I hope you'll do that. We're going to finish our study tomorrow. Don't miss it. It's going to be a great day. I have some, some things planned for you. Okay, see you then. Bye for now. Beautiful day. It's wonderful. This is the day that the Lord